Let's say your boss made you a promise. He promised you that you're going to get an awesome raise if you quickly crush this integral problem. And we want to represent x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 dx as the rate at which we sell some products every month. And he wants to know how many months n would it take to get a sales total of 4. Now, because you're a number ninja who is subscribed to my channel, you're going to solve this quickly in a matter of minutes. So stick around. Let's get started. <sighs> The first thing I want you to notice is the numerator x squared minus 1 easily factors to x minus 1 times x plus 1. And when you look at this integral now, you'll recognize, you know what? You have x minus 1 on top and bottom, so let's go ahead and cancel those out. And this reduces the integral to a very simple integration of x plus 1 dx. And we can use another nifty rule here because if you remember the integral of a sum of terms, it's the same thing as separately breaking those terms up finding their individual integrals and adding them together. And so I'm going to do that here. I'm going to split up x plus 1 as a sum of the integral from 0 to n of x dx plus the integral of 0 to n dx, and this all equals 4. Now, if you remember, the integral of x is simply 1 half x squared plus c, but remember, I don't need the plus c here because for a definite integral, because you are subtracting the result of plugging in the upper and lower limits, the c's would basically cancel out. And so when we evaluate 1 half x squared from 0 to n plus the integral of dx, which is basically 1 dx, and we know the integral of 1 is just x itself, what you're going to do here is, you know, don't be worried that we don't know what n is yet. Pretend it's a number you already know. Just plug in n just as you normally would plug in a limited integration. So when we plug in n on the left-hand side for 1 half x squared, we'd get 1 half n squared minus plugging in the lower limit of integration, that becomes zero. And repeating this for x evaluated from zero to n, you'd plug in the upper limit n. And when you subtract the lower limit, you again subtract zero, and this all equals four. Well, that's awesome because this simplifies even more. The zero terms just go away. And now we're left with one half n squared plus n equals four. And this is a very elementary algebraic expression. We can use a quadratic equation here because when we multiply both sides by 2 to get the coefficient of n squared having a 1 in front, you have n squared plus 2n equals 8. And when I subtract 8 on both sides, this is a very easy quadratic equation to work with. And I'm going to do that here. If you remember, you've got negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy, if you all remember. And when you find out what the roots are going to be here by simplifying what's under the radical, you'll get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 32 over 2, leaving you with negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 36 over 2. And that's really nice because we know that 6 squared is 36. And you'll have two answers here for n as 2 and negative 4. And notice that one of the answers here is negative. And unless you're a magic time traveler who knows some ninja sorcery, you're not going to go back in time. So you're going to tell your boss, hey, man, it's going to take me two months. 